Today's video is all about the beginners. It's a beginner, it's very in-depth, very thorough video on how I update an old coffee table. I'm teaching my husband here and there on the weekends how to paint the way that I paint furniture and prep and everything so that he can help me once in a while when we have some time off together we find that we've actually had a lot of fun together painting furniture. So while I teach him the way that I do it, I can also show you guys. So today we're working on this coffee table and the plan is to sand it, stain it, and then paint the bottom. Let's talk about veneer. So you hear a lot that, oh, I sanded through the veneer. You know, what is veneer? Veneer is a thin sheet of wood that is in, it ha might have a really pretty design on it, or it's just, a nice piece of wood and that goes over maybe an uglier piece of wood or a particle board or whatever but it sits at the top of the furniture or maybe in the drawer fronts um, underneath it might be something cheaper or whatever but that's the bones that the actual piece is made of on the top it's just the nice expensive fancy piece and that is the veneer so when people are sanding, if they're putting too much pressure on it or they're over sanding, you can sand through that sheet and then you're left with this ugly particle board. And what happens is when you put your stain on it, you have two different color stains. One might be lighter, one might be darker, and it sort of ruins your whole piece. So what you wanna do is determine whether you have a, a piece of all wood furniture or if you have a sheet of veneer over the top and that's really important you know usually there's like a little line where at the edge that you can kind of see but this one doesn't have it now I've done a lot of pieces this one has a crisscross pattern on the top and usually that means that they've taken a few pieces of veneer they've cut them up and they've just shaped them the way that they want when we are sanding this off, um, we're gonna be really careful. We might be going through this. No, we're gonna take extra steps to be careful. We're not gonna press on our sander. You know, we're not gonna go nuts. We're go just real gonna, light. Yeah, go okay. real light. Another thing is when you're looking at this finish on here, it's super, super um, shiny. So some people might say, I don't wanna be sanding all day and I don't wanna do that because it's gonna take forever. I don't want to sand through the finish, then the stain, and then to get, you know, so they'll, there's another option of stripping it. You know, you can use um, like citrus strip, I mean, a chemical stripper, and you can actually strip the finish off, and that might give you an easier time when you're sanding. So before you start sanding, I want to talk really quick about safety stuff. Um, and I know people might want to skip over this, but don't, because it's, it's really important. Um, I want to, when you're sanding, our sander has a dust collector here. We don't have a vacuum to put it in, so I have to actually wear a mask, and I got this one because my regular mask wasn't heavy duty <clears throat> enough, and it kicks up so much sand. If it goes in your lungs, I noticed after, I've been sanding for years without a mask. You know, it can lead to lung disease, cancer, lung cancer, a Very lot dangerous. of things. Yeah. So um, I started having chest pain after I was sanding all the time. And duh, you know, it. I, now I wear my mask, but be sure you cover your mouth. And I wanna show you guys a little clip really quick. If you can, I'm gonna show it right now. That is not dirt. That is actually sawdust from a sander when I, um, from the last project I did. and. All that, if that's on the back of my wall, that's in your lungs. That's what's going in your mouth if your mouth is open and you don't have a mask on. So just protect yourself. And then, <laughs> now I've had to start wearing safety, safety glasses, glasses too, even when I'm sanding because I have had two infections in my eyes um, from sanding old wood. And- I tried to tell her. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Sometimes I'll sand like the stripper off and even when I don't think it's hit my eye, I don't feel it a couple days later, you know, it could really mess with your eye. So safety first. Yeah. Now I want to get into the type of sander. I have um, this Makita right now and it's just a five inch orbital sander. Um, mine is like 
three amps. You know, it, it has a couple different speeds, five different speeds. It has a little handle. I like it a lot, but forever I used, um, for a couple years, I used this one. And I did end up going through like three Black & Deckers. And I'm not saying anything bad about Black & Deckers. They're awesome. But I think the amps is only, um, I want to say like 2.4. And what that means is it gets hot really fast. So if I'm sanding for a really long time, it's just not gonna last that long. It, this one, because the amps are higher, it cools down faster so that I can use it for a longer time. Now, what is really the difference? They're orbital sanders, they're five inch. It's really the brand name. When somebody goes to the store, they're like, I don't know if I should get the DeWalt, the Bosch, the Makita, the, you know. Basically, they're all five inch. They're all gonna do the same thing and it's preference. And I know some people will say that's not true, but you guys, this is my opinion. This is what I've learned. I, you know, um, experience, experience. So this is just from my experience. Thank you. <laughs> you can get into sanding paper really quick. And <clears throat> so I have this box, you guys, I got it from Amazon and it had everything from a 40 grit up until I still have 800 grits. I don't use those, but, um, it lasts, it's lasted me a year, a whole entire year. Now I've used almost every pad and I'm done with it. But the difference between this and say the expensive, like Diablo, this is like $14.99 for only I don't even know. Yeah, 10 discs. And this had like 100 discs and it was like $12.99. The difference is these do, I've learned the Diablo ones, the sand mats last so much longer. You can, I can probably get this whole thing done with one sanding mat and then still do another project. Yeah. Where this, I might do this and go through like three sheets. Right. So it's just really up to how much you want to spend, how long you want to work. If you are, you know, when I was first starting out, I, I was just, I bought the $30 sander yeah. and the $10 because, you know, I was broke and <laughs> that's how I started. So, but now I've sort of upgraded over the years as, you know, furniture flipping gets better and better. These come with a sanding pad. <clears throat> so you want to put your sanding pad on first. You know, and I actually already have one on here and we're just gonna use this one. Um, and then you're gonna put your sanding net or your sanding paper on there. Okay, this is a net, you can see through it. So that's, I think, why it lasts a lot longer. And I can definitely tell the difference. I'm a fan, but not a fan of the price. Okay, well, tidbit, I heard that they will have like a variety pack twice a year at the Home Depot for 30 bucks. Oh, nice. So I got to look out for that. Sounds great. I have four different <clears throat> grits here. I have 80 grit, 120 grit, 180 grit, and 220 grit. And the lower the grit is, like 80, it just means the harder the pad is, really. It, so I want to start with the 80. That's going to get this hard finish off, and it's going to give it a, it's a rough really... Finish. Yeah, it's gonna give it a really rough texture. Yeah. Um, but see, most people would go, okay, I took it off and now I'm done. You're not. You actually need to go in then with your 120 grit. Smooth it out. Yeah, it, it's all about like the pores in the wood. Right. You're opening all the pores in the wood and there still will probably be a lot of unevenness after the 80 grit. So then when you go in with your 120 grit, your pores are still open, but you're kind of getting, you're just getting rid of any nastiness, right. maybe any, yeah, any black spots or whatever, unevenness. Now, by the time you get to, and you know what? I would actually use a 150 grit. I just don't have it. 150 grit would be next. Um, then you're starting to smooth it and close those pores, but they're still open enough to where when you put stain on it, it'll, it will, um, yeah, it'll soak up the stain. If you skip it and you go straight to like 220, it's polished. You've polished your piece and it won't soak up any stain. It's too fine. Yeah. No finish. Now, another reason that I go from low to high is because I used to sand, um, 
just an 80 grit and then a 120 grit and I would have all these swirls on my piece and I'd be like, why, are, why do I keep getting these swirls? Because you just went, or no, I'm sorry. I would go from 80 grit to like 180 grit, <clears throat> you know, and I'd just go ahead and polish that sucker right up. Right. But I'd have all these swirls because you need to, it's actually layers. You need to sort of smooth it out and layer all the swirls from your orbital sander or, you know, whatever sander you're using. It's going in circles, so it's gonna make marks. But if you slowly go up, it just kind of takes it out. Yeah. Okay, so I'm starting with my 80 grit. The thing we want to do is make sure that we sand in the way of the grain. So and this is going to be kind of tricky. It is going to be kind of tricky. So I'm just going to say, let's just go from this side of the table to that side, and then that side to this side. Back and forth. Mm -hmm. But we want to do it really slow, okay. and you don't want to push on it. Right. Slightly. That is the most important because the second you start pushing or trying to get a spot gotcha. out, that's when you go through your veneer. So if you can just let the sanding paper do its job and sand it off, you know, you just have to really have patience. When you're doing the sanding day, just stop and be patient and let it do its work. Okay. And then anything you gotta do, any spots or anything, come in with your next grit and work on it like that. This is what it looks like and it's pretty porous and rough but we got the finish off and we got the um, stain off so that was really great but it's still pretty rough so now we need to go in with the 120 grit. This one we want to go a little bit slower because we need to knock off all the roughness and all the blotchy all the splotches or whatever so instead of kind of just you know going like this we want to be a little bit more careful and a little bit more slower with this one because we're trying to knock off all the rough roughness okay. Done. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to just do a really quick 180 grit. This 180 grit smooths out the surface but still lets the stain penetrate. If you wanted to do a 220, you could do that after the stain or 220 or higher. I would do that after the stain to polish your piece. There's still a lot of warmth to it, but I think that's fine with the um, voodoo gel stain that we're gonna put on it. There is that corner has a little bit of the veneer taken off, which happens. We definitely know it's veneer, <laughs> yeah. but we kind of knew that anyway because it's all broken up. And sometimes no matter how careful you are, it just might happen. So we're gonna stain it and we're using, this is voodoo gel stain by Dixie Bell. Ooh, nice. Because I love Dixie Bell. And this is Tobacco Road. It is a brown. brown. And, you know, we can add more coats if we want, but let's just like do one and see how it goes. Awesome. Here, you start. Yeah. We're just gonna, it's like paint. It's thick, you know? See, this is the problem about um, teaching. I just tend to do it. And the reason that, you know, I wanted to take the top off is because I think this is much more a natural look and it, it's just a little bit more updated than the old look. There was nothing wrong with the wood really, or the finish, but it just, it looks like an old piece. You don't have to worry if you go over the edge, if you're gonna paint it. That's good to know. Yeah, <laughs> since this has like a beveled edge and we don't have, um, I don't have a surface prep sander or any of those like sanding pad kind of sanders. Um, we're just gonna leave it. And I have to say, I actually love it when you paint 
the trim part of it or whatever it's called and then just stain the top. We waited about a minute and then we started wiping back and you want to make sure that you have a nice big rag when you're wiping any of the excess off. We wiped the excess off, we didn't leave it on, and this is what we're left with, and it looks even and nice and natural. We'll let it dry for 15 minutes, and then we'll take it in the house, and we'll seal the top, and I'll show you exactly what I'm gonna do for that. Okay, so we brought the piece back in the house, flipped it over, we're gonna use white lightning to clean it. Yeah, you have to clean your piece before you paint it. So I like to use Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner. I think it's like $5.95 for an eight ounce little jar and it's a powder. How long does that last? Like forever. Because this is a chemical, you don't want to um, you know, clean your cabinets with it or clean your table because it will take the finish off. So be really careful and just use it for painting furniture. That's it. It's just a really great prep for painting your furniture. Okay, we're just gonna take a shop towel and I can't find my gloves so he's gonna do it. And you're just gonna wipe it really good. Make sure we get all the dust and debris and all the icky off. It's so important to prep your piece because if you have any grease or grime or dirt or just anything on there, then your paint's not gonna adhere. It's not gonna stick and it'll end up um, pulling and coming off in the future and it's just a mess. So you might as well do it right, make sure you clean it really good. Okay, so now after you put on any kind of cleaner, whether you're doing vinegar and water, regular TSP, white lightning, crud, crud cutter, any cleaner, you wanna take a, another clean rag and you wanna wash off to make sure that there's no more cleaner residue because that's right. another thing. If there's cleaner residue, you just spray that one. Yeah, if there's any cleaner residue on your piece, again, you'll have problems with your paint sticking. So, what are we doing now? Okay, so now we need to talk about what we're actually gonna do with this piece. Okay. That's really important when you're flipping furniture. It, are you keeping that piece for yourself? Are you selling it? What's the plan? Uh, exactly. So that's gonna determine pretty much your paint color. And I always do this. This is the first step that I take when I have a piece of furniture, before I've prepped it, before I've sanded it, before I've done anything. So I've already thought about what I wanna do with this piece. And I kinda wanna explain what, why. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so usually for coffee tables, a really good sell is a white bottom and a walnut top, a natural top, any kind of brown top. It's a great seller. People, it's neutral and people want it in their house. But this table is a little bit different. It's more- Why is that? Because it's um, a lot shorter. We're going by a coffee table. We want a little bit higher. Okay. So this one is lower. So now I have to think, is this gonna sell to um, a family, is this gonna sell, is the, is the woman gonna see this and go, oh, I really want this. But then when I put the measurements on my Facebook uh -huh. and it's a little bit shorter, it's gonna be a, a no for a lot of people. Okay. So this is a harder sell, but it's a good beginner project. And that's why we do, we're doing it. All right. Now, so because I know that it's not gonna go in a big family home, I have to target my audience. I think that this would be a great piece for um, maybe a single young man that has, you know, he's got an apartment and he just needs a piece of furniture. He doesn't want to go to the store. He's looking on Facebook and he goes, oh, I'll, I'll buy that. Because honestly, a lot of my darker pieces have sold to young men. So yeah. that's going to be, right? I like darker furniture. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's going to be our target audience. And what I do, um, like a white or a beige? No, I don't think so. I'm thinking this guy has a room, you know, he's got a big screen TV, just a couch that, you know, maybe his, I don't know, his mom got him or I don't know, whatever. But um, he needs the coffee table, so a I- A man cave? Yeah, 
yeah, it's his man cave. <laughs> so they want to watch the game and right. they just need some stuff to put it out, you know. Yeah. So I think um, black sands would be really good. And today we're going to be using um, the silk line from Dixie Bell. This is an all-in-one mineral paint. So you don't have to do two coats of primer, two coats of paint, and then that's convenient. two coats of sealer. Right. And I just thought it would be kind of perfect yeah. for like your first real painting. All right. Um, now there's a couple things when you're using this. So I'm going to take a brush and you're going to take a brush and we'll do it together. Okay. But you want to use a dry brush when you're painting with this and you only need two coats. Okay. So instead of the six, we only need the two. You need a dry brush. You don't want to use water because it is not chalk paint. It is a mineral paint and that's very different. And because it has the sealer and all that, um, you know, when you're doing your chalk paint, you can just kind of go everywhere in which direction. And as long as you're using your water mister, it moves around fine. There's no brush strokes. This, you have to be a little bit more careful. Okay. This one, you want to go in long <laughs> strokes like this. It's self-leveling. So don't press too hard. Right, if you overwork it too, if you go back and forth, say like 10 times, you'll probably have brush strokes and it'll pull, it'll actually pull the paint. Okay. Yeah. So light touch, but yeah. large strokes. Yes. And you know, um, a lot of people say don't use a lot on your brush. Some people say use a lot on your brush. So really just get the feel for it and figure out what works for you. Sounds good. All right. Um, and you know what we can do too? start on an inconspicuous spot <laughs> like let's start on the inside okay. so you can get a feel for the gotcha. paint All right. and i recommend that for anybody who's beginning you know start somewhere in the back when you're trying to get the feel for a new paint because it just helps and by the time you get to the front you're gonna be a pro <laughs> All right. okay one other really important part since we're not priming and it is not chalk paint it's mineral paint we need to scuff sand the entire oh, piece okay. Yeah, that's going to help with, um, it's basically like deglossing your piece and it's going to help with the paint sticking again. We really want to make sure that the paint never comes off. Um, yep. So, and it's so easy. You're just not go over it. Yeah. Just a light scuff sanding. Don't take any of the finish off or anything like that. Perfect. That's perfect. You paint all this too? Yeah, I like to paint down here because I don't know. I'm not gonna paint in. We'll, we will never paint inside, but on the edges here for sure because it just puts it all together. You get the legs too. Yeah, you want everything we're gonna paint it needs to be scuff sanded. I have another scuff sander. Let me help you. Then you just want to give it a good wipe down when you're done scuff sanding it.
okay, we finished painting the bottom and now we're, we flipped the table over again. Now we need to start painting the edges here in our black sands. But before we do that, I want to seal the top just one time with one coat of satin clear coat. This is Dixie Belle satin clear coat. I really like this one. And we're going to do this because we are only painting the edges here. And if this has, this is really porous right now. So if we get any of the mineral paint on it, it'll just, it, it'll be really hard to remove. So if we give it a nice satin finish first, I'll be able to wipe it. If we get any paint on it, wipe it right off. That way we don't have to do any blue taping. Okay. Okay. And now <laughs> I know it's kind of tricky too using sealer oh, yeah. for your first time. Yeah. Okay. It's not like paint. So um, I want to pour it. We're just going to pour it in here because it's the end of my big can. So this will just be easier. That's the only reason I'm pouring it is because it'll be easier to dip. You don't want to go all over the place. You want to go from side to side because it can leave streaks. So just one way, not back? Yeah, one way back. You want it to look really smooth. Okay, so evenly back and forth. A little bit goes a long way? Uh, yeah, just get the feel for it. This sealer's a little bit thicker. Do I want to stay away from the edges? No, you want to get the edges. Okay. I don't want to take the brush. <laughs> Make sure you get all the way to the edges because whatever part you miss, you'll be able to see that. Okay. And be careful to not overwork. Now, Right now, you need to move on to your next. Gotcha. But you look, you skipped all of that corner. Make sure you still get the corner. Okay. Okay, stop. <laughs> this was actually really good. Yeah. So when you're, when you're doing it, you actually want, anytime you go like this and just leave it, mm -hmm. that will leave a streak once it dries. And we don't have a lot of time to work with this because of the drying time. Okay, so you got to be a little faster. Yeah, and you want to go from one side to the other, not two, two, because those will, that's where streaks come in. Gotcha. And you want it to be all, you know, just a smooth, like, look at, there's no... Uh, uh -huh. Now, okay, look, mm -hmm. you've already missed an entire, that is going to give you streaks, you know? Okay, so I'm jumping the gun. Okay, stop. <laughs> you don't want to go over what we just went. Here, okay. how about you record and I'll show. Okay. Okay, if you look right here, he skipped some. We don't want to skip some and we don't want to keep going over it or we're going to have those streaks. So let's start where you missed, okay? Mm -hmm. Now look, I'm not do do doing, I'm like long strokes. It is so important to do long strokes for your sealer and to have an even application or it's going to ruin your entire piece, especially on top of your chalk paint. You know, this has a little blue tint to it, and that's just to see where it is. But once it dries, it has no tint. So I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to go back over this part again. Now, I don't have enough on my brush, see? Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to start where I left off here. Right. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm doing it with like kind of a light hand so there's no, you know, you don't want to be able to see where I started and mm -hmm. where I ended. And this is how I apply all of my sealers for all of my videos. Sometimes I just end up speeding them up, but this is exactly how I do it to avoid um, streaking. And if I go over it, I'm going from one side all the way to the next side. See, we've smoothed out all of our transition lines, you know, from the next row. And now 
there shouldn't be much that I've missed, but if there is, I would go in with a second coat. Now we just need to add our black sands onto the edge and we're gonna use our little craft brushes. I would go like that. And do that part first. And then move up to the line. And Are you going to do this one too? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so that's what you just have to be careful. If you. You know, if anybody feels like they don't want to risk it, just go ahead and grab your blue tape and blue tape it off. But I don't think we're going to have that hard of a time. We're on our last step. Our last step is gator hide. We're gonna super seal this because it's a coffee table and people will probably have their drinks or plates or you just never know. They might have candles on it. Um, we wanna make sure that we extra, extra protect it. So a regular sealer would be fine, but we want something that's water repellent in case somebody spills. We want something that's a little bit more heavy duty. Okay. And um, Verathane makes a triple thick uh, water-based polyurethane but it's really hard to work with. I've worked with it a lot and it's an excellent product if you can do it right, but it's really hard to work with. So I highly recommend Dixie Bell's Gator Hide because it's pretty thin, it's really easy to work with. They give you the sponge or you can buy a sponge to go with it or you could just use your brush. I used the brush forever. I just discovered the sponge. And yeah. It's really good, it's really easy with the sponge. Okay. But for um, beginners, I recommend, and we already did it, using a satin um, top coat before you use your gator hide. Okay, you wanna make sure that your surface is nice and clean, there's no hair or anything like that on there, because whatever is on there and you put this over it, it's getting locked in. So make sure that your surface is really clean. Um, we're good to go. And then you don't wanna use it right out of the can because like if this black sands isn't dry all the way and then you put your sponge back in the can, it right. contaminates yeah. your can. This works for me. Right. And we're actually gonna do two coats of gator hide. I'm gonna show you how to do a couple times and then you can go for it. Yeah, sponge for me? No, you're gonna use my sponge. Okay, you wanna make sure your sponge is also clean. So, here I'm gonna show you first. Just a good amount on there. And then we want to start start at the corner and just like a regular sealer, you're gonna go from one side to the next side. I almost like to push it in because I don't know, I think it looks better. Like put a little pressure on my sponge, I mean. Now look, it's, I've almost lost my line. So you wanna make sure that you can see exactly where you've already applied it and where you haven't, um, because we don't want any. Overlay? Yeah, they'll leave streaks. Okay. So one side to the other. You don't even have to go twice if you don't want to. Um, let's pour some more in there. So now it's your turn. Okay. Start all the way at the end and go all the way to the other end and come all the way to the end. See, you're going over it way too many times already. I, I mean, it looks great, but you didn't have to do it like that. Okay. Do so you get more? Look at you just. going all the way to the end. Yeah, you have like 
chunks there. You're gonna overwork it. What, should okay. I stop? Yeah, <laughs> now just go on to your next line. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then when you're doing it, go start like off and then go all the way over. That's really good. Now all that excess, mm -hmm. come back with it and you're kind of wiping back all your excess. And that's it. And then you're done. Now go on to your next line. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, it's a, it's like trial and error. It's just getting used to the feel of all of it. Right. Very good. Very good. And now you see you got some dribbling over yeah. the side. Awesome. Very good. Um, yeah, we'll come back in with the second coat. And then that's it. We're done with our table. Beautiful. Yeah. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys find this helpful. And if you do, let me know in the comments and we'll make a couple of these again here and there because we do have a lot of fun yeah. painting furniture it's together. Fun. I'd like to do it again. Yeah. So let us know what you guys think and I will see you guys next week with another furniture makeover. Bye. You know whether to sand the top off or um, you get distracted when you look at me. <laughs> That's like a big, um, <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> so will you wipe the X, X, excess? Excess. And go. So if you like this video. <laughs> yeah, just the top. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay. I am from Chicago. Chicago. They say access. And, you know, access. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> excess. Sorry. Excess. Um, I'm going to put my stuff on and he's going to do it. Let's flip it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hit the button, put that on. Oh, we got to plug it in. <laughs> I just said, ha! Ah!